What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement an email verification system so we can actually verify the emails of our new users. Now, I just made a video yesterday explaining the entire system. So I strongly encourage that you go watch that so you can really understand what's going on when we write this code. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install a couple of dependencies. Now we're going to install IO Redis and this is going to be our Redis client to basically connect to our Redis uh, database or cache. Bcrypt to hash some passwords and UUID to actually generate unique IDs for our users. Now we're going to install the types because we're using TypeScripts. Okay, so now that we're done with that, we can actually go ahead and just get started. So the first thing we need to do is go over to our resolver, our create account resolver. And we really need to check, like, is there already someone that has that email and password as their uh, account information? So to do that, we can just grab our instance of Prisma here, and we can just do const existing user equals await prisma.user.find first, where the username is equal to the username they gave us. Or the email is equal to the email they gave us. So then we can check here if um, we actually have a user, so it's not null. Then we want to throw a new error saying email or username already taken like that. So now we're on this line of code and we can assume that the user's good. There's no one with their email or username already registered and we can just continue with the process. So now we actually want to hash their password because we're going to be storing their hashed password in our database later on. So here I'm going to import hash from bcrypt and then go here and do const hashed pass is equal to await hash and we pass in credentials dot password and then pass in seven as assault rounds now the higher that this number is the more secure the hash is but at the same time it'll take longer people usually put 10 but seven is is not bad at all you can just put seven so now we really we have their username we have their email and their hashed password we want to store that in a cache in redis because we don't want to just register a user we want to store their information temporarily while we wait for them to basically verify their email. If they never verify their email, it'll be very easy to, to delete their information from Redis. And it's more lightweight for us. And so to do that, we actually need to have a Redis server up and running. So I'm going to go in Docker Compose and configure a Redis service for us. So um, we're going to name it cache and the image will just be the Redis image from Docker Hub. And the ports will just basically bind our 5002 local port to the Redis port in the container, which is 6379 by default. And basically, that's really all we need to just set up Redis. And we can open a terminal here and do docker dash compose up dash D. And then we just have Redis running as well as our database. So now we actually need to instantiate the Redis client so we could connect to our Redis server. So I'm going to go here to an, our lib folder and create a Redis.ts file. Here, I'm going to be importing Redis from IO Redis, and this is in basically the, the Redis client that this library provides for us. So to do this, we're going to actually implement a singleton pattern because we only want one instance of Redis instantiated at, in our project. So to do that, I'm going to create a global variable called Redis client, and it's going to be type of Redis or null because it's actually set to null by default. And doing this is pretty tricky. You think all you got to do is just Redis client equals new Redis and you're done. But I've tried that. I've tried many things. And for some reason, it tends to not work when you were doing the type gen. So trust me when I tell you, um, it's pretty, pretty complicated to, to get it to work. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a function called get Redis client. And this function is going to return an instance of Redis. And here we do if there's no Redis client. So if this is null, 
basically we do redis client is equal to and then we want to check the environment variables so do we have environment variables called redis host and an environment variable called redis port and this is basically necessary for production because if you're going to uh, be using Versal or anything to host Next.js, maybe your, your Redis database is on a different server and you can use environment variables to point over to it. So if these are set up, we're going to want to use them in our configuration. So the host will be equal to that environment variable as well as the port. And I actually just uh, copy this over like that. Now we're getting some errors because the types don't quite match up, but don't worry, we'll get to that now. So if those environment variables do not exist, we just, uh, by default, the port is 5002 and the host is localhost. And this will be for development. So yeah, these things are not matching up because the, the Redis port is a string and it, it takes in a number. So we have to basically cast it to a, a number. And then it's giving us another error because it says here you can't do that and to just cast it to unknown first if um, this is really what you want to do and it is what we want to do so we're going to do that so now that we have that basically we just return res client and so now we're done with this and we can go back to our resolver and we have access to redis now if you don't know redis is a key value database so you have keys and they correspond to their values so let's actually create the unique id which will be the key for our user so to do that we actually have to import the weird thing about uuid is that you have to do a common js import when you're using uh, nexus and resolvers I'm, I'm thinking of filing an issue on their github but for now just to get around this we'll just do const v4 is equal to require UUID and if you do um, import ES6 style it's not going to run the type generation it's weird I know but this is just what we have to do and so we renamed it to UUID v4 just to increase readability in our code so now we can do const key is equal to UUID v4 just like that now we have our key let's create our value so this will be an object we'll call it user object where the username is credentials.username, the email is credentials.email, and we'll call it pass hash, or we'll be consistent, hashed passed, and we can just pass that in like that. Now we can go in Redis and insert this data. So to do that, we'll do array and then get Redis client. And here we can call multi because we're actually going to run more than one command. We're going to insert the data and then we're going to set an expiration date for the data. So it'll automatically delete after a certain period of time. So you use multi to do that. And then you do dot and we're going to do hash map set where the key is the key we created and the user object like that. Then we do expire. So we want the key or the data that corresponds to the key to expire. And here they go by seconds. So we can do 60 seconds times two which is two minutes. Then we want to execute this query. So we do dot exec at the end. So now that we're done and we've basically inserted their data, their credentials in our Redis database, we're ready to send them an email. And if you've if you've kept up with the series, you know that we've already set up a way to send emails and we've been sending some mock emails over here, but we want to basically configure this to send them an email with a URL to our, uh, our server and pass in the UUID as a query parameter in that URL. And basically we'll tell the user to go to the email, click on that link so we can handle their request and everything like that. And that will be them verifying their account. So in this gener generate verification email, now we wanna take a UUID as well. And so here we wanna configure this here and the href of this link will be process.env.server URL or HTTP localhost 3000 and then we close that off and then here we do slash API slash confirm account and we pass in ID is equal to UUID uh, credentials dot UUID we actually want to implement a warning 
So in case we don't have server URL defined, we just want to do uh, something up here basically saying if there's no processed um, dot env dot server URL, we can do console dot warn no server URL environment variable defined. And then ignore if type gen because this will run when we're doing our type generation for Nexus. So now just to organize this code, um, instead of having this function here, I'm going to get rid of it and do const mail options and generate verification email. And for the username, it's credentials dot username for the email. It's credentials dot email. And for the UUID, we just pass in the key and then here for send mail, pass in mail options like that. So now we're done. And I'm just going to change this message to be more specific and say, check your email for instructions on how to verify your account. There we go. All right. So let's actually test this out now. So I'm just going to run our server. And if everything went well, we should see no errors. And actually, I almost forgot. It's a good thing we coded this. We actually need to set some environment variables. And over here in Redis, I actually want to do something similar. So if there's no process.env.redis host, or there's no, basically, I want to check these environment variables and print out a warning if they don't exist. No Redis host or Redis port env vars defined. And so now in our environment variable, we want to define Redis port to 5002, Redis host to localhost. And what was the other one? Oh, yeah, server URL to HTTP localhost. 3000. And since this file is in our git ignore, we can create another file called, and I'll make it up here called .env.development. And basically this file will be in our source control to serve as a placeholder for any collaborators in our project so they can know how to set up the .env file. And also this, these will serve as defaults for our environment variables. And so now, we can run our development server and we can open it up in our browser. Now, this is where we left off. So I'm going to go over to slash API slash GraphQL so we can start testing out our, our resolver. And so now we're going to create this account, gave us these instructions and over here it should print out a URL. Here's the email with a link. And right now we have not uh, handled this request, but we see here confirm account with this ID here. And this is awesome. Um, for some reason over here, I'm passing. It was actually passing target in the query parameter because I forgot to put the closing quotation marks, but we should be good now. So let's actually create a handler for that request when we uh, click that email link and we go over to our server. So to do that, we'll go to our source pages um, API and we'll just create a new file and we'll call this confirm underscore account .ts. So here we'll make a handler and this will be an async function. And this async function has the request, which is a next API request. So now we can check if this request actually has that ID as a query parameter. So if request dot query dot ID, we want to run the rest of the code. So in this case, if they have the ID, we're going to use the ID to send a query to our Redis cache to get their credentials. So we'll call that Redis result is equal to await get redis client dot we'll do multi again and then we'll do dot h get all passing in the um, id and then we'll do dot delete and we want to delete the credentials 
like so and we're getting some errors because of the types because this is saying it's not the right type so we need to cast it as a string and then of course we want to execute all these commands so we do dot exec and so if we get a result we want to handle that result and I'll actually make another function called handle redis query like that and then if there's a redis result we just handle it and pass in the result and we want to get this type here and we declare that we receive it here as a redis result like that and no matter what even if they do have an id or not we still want to redirect them back to the login page so to do that we need access to the res response object which is a next api response and so here we do res.redirect redirect to process.env.server url or just localhost 3000 slash login and we need to do http like that so this will redirect them back to our login page and now we actually want to handle the result redis result query so how this works is that this is an array and it's a two-dimensional array so it's an array that holds a tuple basically and each tuple holds either an error or a result and that corresponds to every command we did here so the first item in our array will be a tuple that has either the error or the result of our first uh, command here then the second one here so we, re we really care about this one right here so we want to say if there is an error so we just want to check if there's something in redis result at zero zero so the first one and the first one is the error so if there's something there we can just throw that uh that error basically because there's an error that happened and if there's no error we can assume that at the first index here we have the response from our query and it should be an object which is the one that we passed in previously so he, we want to get access to that so cash to count is equal to redis result zero one and we actually need to cast this because it doesn't know the types and if you guys know how to actually get types or type inference on your redis queries or if there's any library for that i would love to know if you could leave a comment if you know about that so here we know that we're going to be receiving a username also an email and a hashed pass which is also a string so if any of these um, any of these fields don't exist so if there's no cached account dot username or there's no cached account dot email or there's no cached account dot hashed past we basically just want to return from this function and not do anything and so once we get here we know that we have their credentials and we can just register their account so just for debugging purposes i'm actually gonna um, console log their credentials so we can check it out in the console and here we can just create their account in our database so we can do await prisma and we import it from um, this file here that we have so await prisma dot user dot create pass in some data and the data their email will be their cached account dot email their username is their cached account dot username and the hashed or we named it past pass hash in our uh, prisma schema so it's pass hash is cached account dot hashed past and to do that we, this needs to be an asynchronous function um that's pretty much it so this will run this code and it'll just redirect them and in the background this will be running and it'll doing everything uh, you could do await here that's op that's optional but no matter what we do have to export this handler function so export default handler i'm actually gonna go over here and 
connect over to our database so we can actually see the users that's created. So to do that, I'm going to PSQL into localhost, the user's Postgres, and the port is 5001. And the password was Postgres. And so here we can do list our tables, connect to Prisma, list our, our, our tables, or this was listing our database, this is listing our tables. And we can select all from users, users I mean. We can select all from users and we see here there's no users right now. So let's do this entire flow and we'll see a user in our, in our database. So we create this. Over here we get a link, we click the link. So now we're in our email address. And remember our username here is Alice Hi. Our password is this, our email is this. So this is all working great. We click register account. We're redirected back to the login page. And looks like here something was logged. This was the creation of our user. When we go over here to our database, we select all from users. And there's our user. And so in future episodes, we'll be implementing authentication so the user can log in and use the credentials that exist in our database. So yeah, that was pretty much it. I know it was a lot but I think it's a pretty cool system. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll be implementing authentication.